Numbers? We do. 42. Seven. And you were told there was going to be no 23. math. 23. 17. Number one. Four and a half. The girls raised $1,360 at, at the, the charity, charity booth, table. Which is interesting because due to Facebook's memory, when we were doing it the second year, we did 800 on our first yeah. day. So we're going up. Second of all, yesterday our, our buddy Jerome came by while we were talking to Joel Thingball and he didn't hang for long. But he tells me of his DC collection and he's on that quest to get every DC comic published. He's missing only 22 books. 22. And, which would cost him over a million dollars to find. And 82 of the books he currently has, he just has partials of. Okay. So if you have them, get a hold of Jerome and, and uh, he probably won't buy them, but you know, whatever. All right, I guess I'm in charge of this here podcast. I'm going to start. Everybody does what I want. I'm going to start with the women. Everybody out there, women wise, take your shirts off. I'm teasing. I can't see. I can run NSA tapes for that. Oh, hang on. My lovely daughter is calling me. I can. I'm going to show you just how cool this technology is. Who's running? Who needs the card run? Come on over. What's the amount, Holly? Sit in the hot seat. You're in big trouble now. What we're doing here, this is a live podcast going out on YouTube. Because I podcast for real. And we're actually doing it live. This is to show people that couldn't come to the con how much fun we're having. What did you get? We hold, hold it up hold it up to the camera, let people see. I think they see it backwards too, so you know what? <laughs> All right. How about you guys? What kind of stuff did you guys buy? We are, he bought a deck of Star Wars. A deck of Star Wars yeah, cards? But we don't, but my, our mom had them and then we were in the Yeah, just hold them up to the camera. Let everybody see. Two hands. So do you think it's more fun to be sitting at home in a dark basement watching the Comic Con, or do you think it's more fun to actually be here? Actually, be here. You hear that? Get out, shut the computer down, and get here. All right, let's see if I can get connected to the interwebs here. This technology is kind of cool. I got this PayPal reader that plugs into my phone, so then for the charity booth, I can take credit cards. So, do you think you speak into it? Yeah, that's my microphone. Oh, is hang on a second. Mute? Yeah, go ahead. You can talk into it. The only thing that's funny is the people that are watching us, we can't see, but they can see you. We pause as I try to log in again. Logins are very important. If you get them wrong, it won't let you. All right, what was the total? So it's just a, a book for, with a purple sticker on it. No idea. Um, I, I, make, an, make an offer. How much do you think that's worth? Hundreds of thousands of dollars? Five. Five? That sounds good to me. Is that good with you? Sure. All right, I mean, uh, five dollars. Who needs a big cash register? I can just do it all right here. Give you that, and it's processing, processing. Now, do you owe, do you owe your dad five bucks now? It's a heat thing. Just do whatever you can. All right, it's done. Thank you. All right, thank you. And that's how we conduct business in the 21st century. Now that that's done, I actually use this like when I'm selling stuff on my own. I always threaten to sell vast accumulations of crap, but I never do. So anyways, let me disconnect, put this away for the moment. I just saw Ben Piscuit run by. He's doing a Supergirl commission for me. And he, I told him if you some by and the chair's empty, I'll make him sit down. But he, he came this way and then zipped that way. He's wearing that yellow shirt if you go back. My buddy Gruber is, is really blowing comics out now. And I picked up this Adventure of Superman graphic novel. He asked 40 bucks. He was doing 70% off on it. 
I, I don't even know what this is. If this is like a thirty, forty dollar, oh, what the hell am I talking about? I can open it. I bought it. Of course, Pat hermetically seals these son of a bitches in there. So, uh, it's a good thing I'm loaded with comic bags. Oh, so we're talking. This thing originally was forty bucks. I got it for twelve bucks. And Jose Luis Garcia Lopez has been a guest at our con in the past. Uh, this is kind of a best of book. It's got uh, Superman 294, 301, 302, all new collector edition. That's where he's fighting Wonder Woman. And it's amazing because as I, I've read that comic, the Treasury edition years ago, didn't even know he was doing it. And then I find out he's here and I never dug it up to bring here, assuming I got it. Another book that caught my eye, I always talk about I really want to see the, you know, I have a thousand bucks to buy stuff. I'm back in my buying mood, by the way. I picked this up called Mint Condition, a best of, best in show comic strips by Phil Giuliano. And I picked up a copy. He was gracious enough to sign it for me. And he's a natural salesman. He was trying to pimp a print on me, and I'm not big into prints. Although I, I almost thought about asking him to do a Supergirl sketch, but I, I'll have some time maybe later. And it's basically just a, a comic strip he does. A lot of it's Star Wars jokes, but he did tell me one of the things that happens is in order to try to get uh, some of the best Star Wars toys, one of the characters travels back in time, ends up on the Muppet Show, the real Muppet Show. You know, it's time to play the music. I promise I won't do that again. So I picked it up. Kind of fun. You can go to www.bestinshowcomics.bigcartel.com. And I'll hold this up, and I'm pretty sure it's all backwards. Oh my god, it's not mint. There's a nick in the corner. That's it, throwing it out. That's pretty much it. I have no idea if we can hear Corey's voice or not, but I'm going to put away my PayPal reader because I don't want to lose it. You know what I'm saying? I thought that just that way. I put away my phone too. I'll throw in my garbage later. We talked about some of the stuff the MCBA was selling. If you are interested, those cups I showed yesterday, the Troll Load Reunion and the, the uh, uh, Harley Quinn by W.C. Caroni. I'm probably slaughtering his name again, but he I don't know if he listens to the podcast or not. They're available, so if you're interested, you probably go to MCBA or get a hold of them. Uh, they got T-shirts. They also got this pin that I picked up, it had, which I think is kind of cool because it's got the date. and. And then, of course, I got this earlier. It's uh, Uncle Sven, which is the name of the comic store that uh, the Source Comics and Games on. Longest running comic shop. Uh, I can't quite get a good good camera shot, otherwise I pivoted. Unk for all and all for Unk. He was one of the founders. Well, he, you know, we talk a lot about John Nunziata, St. Paul Comics, and uh, Colonel Dave is his name. Or is it General Dave? I forget. Anyways, he... Uh, he actually founded uh, uh, Uncle Sven's Comics and uh, sold it out eventually. He actually talked to me before, I think I had Hot Comics and I was looking to sell and he come talk to me to see if I wanted to buy and I was like, no, I don't think I could get away with that. Uh, and then of course, these are the MCBA's 25th anniversary buttons, they're a very nice hologram. Uh, they actually just put a bunch of them on the freebie table. I got mine, of course, during the 25th anniversary, so that was pretty cool. So, the other thing that MCBA does that's kind of cool is they have this very nice uh, program. And this year they put the art for the Troll Lords on it. They had the 30th anniversary panel, as all three guys are here. Inside they got a big ass map of And uh, they also have other things where they talk about the panels. Like right now, let's see, what is it? It's. Uh, 11.30, if you were in the panel room on the other side, Heart of the Hero, Can Comics Still Inspire? And uh, Liz Birub and Trina Robbins. Oh, I'm sorry, that's next hour. Yeah, I know it's a superheroes have traditionally been noble if flawed warriors for justice and truth. But is that still the case? Join our panel as we explore these questions. I have no idea who the panel is, I have to go look. The MCBA did record the panels this year, which I think is a brilliant idea, especially for people that can't go. And if the if it actually ends up working nice, I will probably 
uh, see if I can't get them to put them online because that's the only way I get to see the pound because I get to spend time with you and I'm not trying to abandon Corey here but don't tell him that and of course I will disappear from two to five because of the MCBA's fabulous art auction I usually go to help out I got a lot of cash burning in my pocket and I will try to uh, score some cool pieces one of the pieces I donated that was on my eBay website we had a shadow comic book that was a retailer incentive if you ordered probably scad loads you got an alex ross shadow per pencil and the one that nick got in his in his collection was actually very nice and uh i had it on the ebay webs i mean people people gave me ridiculous offers for it i mean the thing prices at 300 bucks if you go there now and just do uh shadow uh incentive alex ross you see a lot of he's done a lot of, of covers for that but if you can find the ones he sketched uh, they range from just awesomely incredible to okay i did 200 of these things i'm getting real tired so alex if you're out there we'd love to have you come up to the comic con you're just down in chicago so you can probably hop a ride with some of the guys and come on up It'd be fun to see you so, uh, earlier i went over with uh, dana and Ho both holly one at a time they dana had her uh, Dawn books, i.e. my Dawn books, autographed, and Lisner said it was kind of fun. Hang on a second. Watch the crowd. I'll go get those books. sit over here in case somebody's coming. Anyway, she went and uh, she had him autograph it and he put this little tiny thing on the bottom, which was very cool. And he complimented her saying he loves a well-read edition. Uh, autographed the second one, the third one, went and autographed uh, Claws 2 for me. And then he also done did Thank you. He also done did uh, a story in Harley's Little Black Book, number three, and he autographed that in Dana Pickup. It's got one of those damn shiny black covers, which are damn near impossible. I'm going to angle over here, because the lovely Zantana is talking, is talking with and Jen Wicked was there a minute ago, but she walked away. That was my thumb. Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Anyways, that's what I've been up to. Santana walked away. That's what I was waiting for. Well, while you sit there and watch the back of this guy in front of us, I'm going to go put away my comics and Dana's comics. She'll be most for to see that I'm darkening around. With her. She learned that from me. I'd get like a shot of that ass. Standing around doing absolutely nothing. Who do you think he is, me? Actually, I think I'm gonna go get cinnamon rolls. Where do they have cinnamon rolls? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Clean up the mess. Actually, the cardboard you can take that throw away. Actually, the cardboard. Let's give it to Tim Kaiser. If he's here today, I don't know if he's showing up today. I haven't yeah, seen. A bit of I have not seen Butch yet. 
Denise is over there doing the face painting again. Remember, send in what you want to see on Corey's face. I'm going to buy and we're going to have her paint it on Corey's face. Really? Really, really. I just want to have you go to the board with paint job. Well, depending on how involved it is. By the way, you did get an email, Joe. I got an email. You got an email. I, I'm oh, shocked. No. I'm really depressed because when I... Whoa. Oh, never mind. It's not that big. When I was at... Uh, I went home last night, forgot my computer here, so I couldn't get online to, to check my emails to see what's going on. Guy has a question for Joe. For me? We know Corey oh, gotta go get gas. Oh, no, I, we I lied, I got gas. Kate Kirby. What artist do you really appreciate, Joe? Who are your best of the best artists? Best of the best. I love John Byrne when he's not phoning it in. Uh, I like... Oh, cool. Yeah, airfare from Australia would be pretty, pretty expensive. Oh, those mushrooms. Let's see, what are we talking here? Cameras always make them nutty. Isn't it great? I like the kid who yesterday, when I told him we were podcasting live on YouTube, went and got his computer and put us on YouTube, recording him watching us on YouTube. There goes Pat. Say hi, Pat. He's busy. Must have heard there's free food upstairs. Uh, again, John Byrne I like. I've talked about getting the... Uh, the uh, oh, I hate it when he does this. Now I can't see what I'm doing. Hey, hey guys, I got Pat. How you doing? Sit down, Pat. We talk. If you see some poor guy walk around with a big foil, black foil, say, hey, can I see your Superman? Oh, cool. He's got original full power schedule. Uh... Superman from the 70s. Really? They were like 20 grand. It's uh, awesome. A little bit older looking, a little stuffy looking, but. Take a hot dog and spread me down. Okay. I just put in my food order. I, original Superman done by the creator. So if we see that guy, he'll probably walk by while I'm talking or doing something stupid, and you're all going to be going, there he goes, there he goes. Uh, did I mention John Byrne? No, I love John Byrne's art. That's why I've gone. Uh, to get not only the, the X-Men Omnibus, but I got the Fantastic Four Omnibus. Uh, I like McFarlane, uh, his early stuff. I loved watching it on Swan. I enjoy Rob Liefeld, too. I mean, I know he's at an autonomically incorrect, and he's all over the place. But I think just because I, I, he's so enthusiastic that I actually uh, enjoy his stuff. Uh, let's see, who else? Frank Miller, I'm liking The Dark Knight. I, I've i talked in the past, you know, I, I like Dead Coast stuff, uh, the, the early stuff. It's almost like when the later stuff, he went to a more minimalist style that I'm not as keen on. Although he did, I did get one of those books he did, the uh, A Dead Co. number 20, which was actually very refreshing and fun to read. And you can go on eBay and find almost all of them. I think they actually offered them in the last uh, previous catalog. So if you want to pick some of those up. And they're four bucks a pop. You can't go wrong with that. Not with today's comics. I think those would have to be my top ones. I mean, I loved Michael Golden on uh, Micronauts. Adam Hughes. Uh, Amanda Palmer. I mean, you know, the good girl type art. I like Dave Sim. Cerebus. Jeff Smith's Bone, you know, the creator stuff. I love Comic Con. <laughs> so, that's pretty much it. Now I just think. Unlike Corey, I don't have a vast repertoire of knowledge to talk on. Plus, I'm kind of tired. I didn't go to the party last night. I don't normally go to the party. I get home and my back's talking, my feet's aching. I just get real tired. Uh, just want to go to bed, sleep. And then I didn't. You know, I'm up half the night. Holly came in late. She went outside with her friends, stoked up the old fire pit, and, and uh, did that for a long time. And then, of course, when I got up to get them all going, oh, we're going to come in later. But to their credit, they got here a couple, about a half hour after we did. So, and I think they're out in the round. Ooh, sorry, Jen Wick had just bent over. She's got a nice butt, but I didn't say that.
Let's see, let's see if I can get somebody over here. This is Wolverine. Come on over. I got their attention. Come on over. We're live podcasting on YouTube. I want the people who, who can't afford to get here to, to say hi. I cannot get right close. <laughs> oh, that's fine. She's got a... a here, let me just... Lean this down, you see you got the full petticoat and everything on. <laughs> the best damn Wolverine at the show, let me tell you. <laughs> I think it's fully plastic, that's why it doesn't work. Yeah. Cool. Do you guys enter the contest or just out having fun? No, we're just out walking around. Outstanding. Cool. Well, let me give you our card. Like I said, we're, we're, we do a podcast. I got one yesterday. I was outstanding. Master Raider attack. Oh, did you guys catch that? Because, you know, I'm, I'm slow as molasses in January. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. Have yeah, some fun. That was really cool. I mean, she, her, her skirt's all wide and everything. So, Corey, Pat tells me there's a guy walking around with a big black portfolio that has a piece of original art from the Superman's creator. From Superman's creator. And if we see him walking by, see if he'll show it to us. So... I have napkins. Oh, you went out front and got those. I have cinnamon rolls. Ah, just because what? we're at the state fair. Just what a diabetic needs. There we go. Well, if you want, I also have frosting. I don't know if you want to pull up the. Uh, see if there are any more comments. I made a couple bumbling things. Bumbling attempts. Thank God Corey showed up. I was just about to stare at the camera for ten minutes. Well, we're used to that from you. Better is that. Oh, Firefox is updating. Well, how damn rude of them. Yeah, I think yesterday... I'm going to eat today. Yesterday, both I, I didn't. The, the computers are using for the MB, MCBA this is store. vegetarian, right? Right? This is vegetarian. If it doesn't have a face on it, it is. There you go. I don't know. But both their computers and Corey's computer started updating while we were trying to get the podcast going. I haven't turned mine on, and I don't think I will. What was that? that Yahoo! Yeah, somehow in my browser said, hey, we're going to give you Yahoo. I don't want Yahoo. <laughs> I want uh, Google, goddammit. I want Google. Go, 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 go. go. But we're going to open up see if there are any comments. Cool. Because I know somebody was asking one, but I don't oh, know. My head hurts. Oh, Is that my us? I mean, I'm not on. There we go. All right, here we go. Uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Uh, here we go. Put it up on a bunch. Yep, I picked. Up, I gotta get my collection. I picked up Captain intact. America six and seven. Which is the after oh, Kirby run. I want to step on your shoes. He's not wearing his pretty shoes today. No, I, I'm wearing regular chucks. Today is kind of a dress down day. A pair of choppers. He found no plausible competition for the best dressed man in comics. I'm still, you know, still. But it's jeans because it's Sunday. Sunday's a little more relaxed, a little quieter. And I already won the title. No one is challenging, no one comes close. I could get the um, uh, colonel over here. He's dressed way better than you. No one. In black. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, black's boring. Black's one note. I have many notes. So, uh, Captain America, Volume 6 and 7. Oh, he talks. I'm going to eat his cinnamon. It also oh, has the uh, burn run in it. Oh, that's fun. That's who I mentioned one of my faves. I picked up Ghost Rider number 4, which is the last part of the original Ghost Rider run. And it's one of the essentials that I would not have bought if it wasn't $5, because I remember not liking it much. Is that the run I was talking about yesterday, where the the when he becomes Ghost Rider, the demon almost acts as a separate entity, and then yes. they discover... See, that's where I jumped on to Ghost Rider. That's where we get the name Zarathros. Yeah, and, and I actually enjoyed stuff. it all. Some of the covers were hulky, but I thought it was really cool the way it ended. There were a bunch of books, I think, ending at that time that had been around Ghost Rider, 
Master of Kung Fu, uh, Tomb of Dracula. They all had the, like there was a certain part where the story, they realized, okay, we're ending this. Let's go out really with a bang. And that was well, kind of fun. Master of Kung Fu, the ending of that was kind of weird. Let me finish this and I'll get into it. Jin's going to distribute her book. And while she's gone, I'll bring a copy over to show you. So, Master of Kung Fu, the sales weren't going that well. Very cool. And of course, you can read the archive for free at our backwards internet. <laughs> so, Shooter met with Doug Mensch to say, we need to do something to make the sales pop. And Shooter's version of the story is, you just need to do something to get people more engaged, get people more excited. You can do anything you want. You can have um, Shang-Chi uh, take over Fu Manchu's empire. You can uh, have a ninja come in. You can do all of these things. You just got to do something to make it more exciting. Doug Mensch's version of that same meeting is, Shooter said that we needed to get rid of the Fu Manchu stuff. So what we should do, we need to kill Shang-Chi and replace him with the ninja. There goes Kelly. He's one of the big three. Very shy, podcast shy. And That's Paul Ewart. He was known as Node the Barbarian. And in this meeting, Shooter said, we're going to be doing this with a lot of characters. We're going to be replacing Thor with somebody new, you know, younger. We're going to be replacing Captain America. We really need to revitalize the comics by, these characters are old, they've been around for 20 years, we need to replace them and revive them and, and get them to sell better. And did they? Well. Being that they canceled them all. With Master of Kung Fu, rather than do that, Doug Mensch quit. And that's why the last issues are by Denny O'Neill. Now here's the thing, there are two things that lead credence to Mensch's version of the story. The first is, when he left Marvel, he went to the Comics Journal and said, this is what happened in the meeting. And at the time, the Comics Journal was doing actual journalism instead of everything Marvel does sucks. And they reached out to some of the editors and creators at Marvel who said, off the record, yes, Jim Shooter is constantly talking about this, but he won't be able to get it through because Stan is still in charge. The other thing is that Jim Starlin has talked in interviews about how he was asked after he did the death of Captain Marvel we would like you to come in and kill off Shang-Chi do the last few issues of Master of Kung Fu and kill him off and Starlin said no because he didn't want to be known as the guy who just kills characters because <laughs> he'd killed Adam Warlock he had just killed um, Captain Marvel and oh, he yeah, didn't want to be now. the guy who I kill everybody so Instead, Master of Kung Fu, they ended publication. Denny O'Neill did a thing where he left behind the world and went away. So that's what happened with Master of Kung Fu with that ending. Um, I, what was the other essential I picked up? Oh, I picked up Essential Fantastic Four 1 and 2 because at five bucks, I'm going to reread those. Oh, yeah. And I may go back and see if they've got the Ditko Spider Man because I'm going to reread that over and over and over again. And since they're going out of print, I want to have a backup copy because, you know, five bucks. Yeah. One of these days I'll dig out mine and and just figure out what I'm missing. By then they'll all be expensive. Oh, yeah. they the most, Some of them already are. Yeah. The Warlock Essential. That's dressed down. Yes, this is dressed down. I'm telling you, if Colonel walks by, you'll jeans. see what I'm talking about. I'm wearing blue jeans. I'm wearing my work pants. Yeah. Not because I necessarily like them, but they're nice, but they have, they're cargo pants. So they have pockets on the side. So when I decide not to wear my coat because I'm super hot, I don't have to sweat. Wait a minute. Jin's not around. Nope. I can tell secrets. Yes. Secrets of Jin. When I met Jin, she did not dress the way she does now. She didn't even have a top hat. And what, 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 she, what? And what she normally wore were um, t-shirts and cargo pants. And she loved cargo pants. She wore black cargo pants all the time. But then um, the year that we, you know, the, the year, first year I met her, she slowly started, oh, I think I like these dress shirts. 
and she started buying dress shirts and wearing dress shirts. And then she uh, wanted a top hat because she thought they looked cool. And she got the top hat, and I still remember, I probably still have somewhere, a picture of her, the first picture of her with her umbrella, top hat, and a dress shirt with the eyebrow up. And she was like, this is my new look now. This is who I am now. A top hat? Yeah. And you complained about Lidsville. Of course. Oh. I complained because there wasn't enough Charles Elsa O'Reilly. Joe was run off. But I, as she sort of figured out the kind of art she wanted to do and the sort of the image she wanted to project, you know, that's how long I've known her. I've known her that long. The camera back. See? Joe wants to make sure that it's Lidsville. on camera. Lidsville. Lidsville, the comic. Yep, yep. Now, can we take a look in that and see sure. how is the drawing of Charles Nelson Riley? And yep. let's see if I can identify the artist. All right. Uh, Lidsville, actually, this, what is, I would like this is probably a lot better because now you don't have as much shine to it. Although it's a nice copy. I mean, it's got a nice cover gloss, one of the gold keys that we've talked about. When I'm looking at it, I would like it if you went to a Grand Comic Book Database. I'm not going to let you touch it. Oh. It kind of looks like him. Oh, not really. Well, I mean, if you if you remember what he looks like in the show, I mean, they don't have the rights. I don't think they had the rights to do an exact likeness, but you definitely know who it is. What was it Hoodoo? <laughs> the hippie ads are very cool. Yeah. Wanted everyone to touch him. 3D dimensionals. If you want to go jump there, yeah, there's no. Credits. That's why I looked at it, and um, it is not by Dan Spiegel. Um, it looks a little crude, so it was oh, probably yeah, not of, one of their main of artists. Kiss. But one Whoa, of the things, scary life-size monster ghost. Woo! One of the cool things about uh, learning about Dell and Gold Key and stuff is learning Paul S. Newman wrote most of the adventure books um, from like, I don't, I forget what it was, but Mark Evanier oh. was their editor in chief. You ever have SSPs? Oh, remember, rub them up. <laughs> I did not have those. Well, you lived in Southern Illinois. For you, cow tipping was fun. Central Illinois, and I was never a car person. Cow. Car. Very moving. Sorry, we're going to milk that joke for a while. By the way, those of you who make gifts. Oh. Uh, see what I put up with. See what happens when I don't edit. He'll go on like that for hours. Uh, let's see, uh, Matthew Guy's having chicken and rice for lunch. Um, Data Breed, Data Banks, who's over in Australia, Vegemite on toast. Now, I have a comic book story about Vegemite. Put the camera back. I'm tired of looking at our freeze frame. Yeah, but I like looking to see if there are any comments. Yeah, well, minimize it. Hello, boys. Can you interview a creator right now? Yes, I'm, who? I, uh, it's a surprise. I'll send someone right over. Okay. Cool. Which will work because I have a commission that should be done about now, and I'll go get it and bring it over and share it. Oh, okay. It actually very cool. I wonder if I, I wonder if I walk around. You know, it's, it's today I'm I'm in a buying mode, and I keep thinking, oh, I should ask for commissions, ask for commissions. But I'm also cognizant of the fact there's only like five hours of the con, and in two hours I'm going to do the art auction. Maybe I don't know if I'm going to hang around. If there's nothing I want to bid on. So, and the thing is, is the things I'd like to bid on are usually so damn expensive. <laughs> so, Vegemite. Vegemite. I was on a Kirby discussion list. It was an email list back in the 90s. We used to have these lists where you would mail to a central location and it would mail to everybody on the list. And it was about Jack Kirby. It's how I learned a lot about Kirby and learned a lot about comic history from these people. 
um, especially uh, about Timely Comics and Atlas Comics from Dr. Uh, Michael Vassalero, who does introductions on all of the Atlas Marvel Masterworks. He, the man knows everything. And I believe we have a special guest here. I'm Are you here to be vacate interviewed? the seat? Yes, all right. Out of the way. Oh, don't worry. I could blather on about funny books all day. Sure. Hi, I'm Spanky Cermak. Nice to meet you. I'm Corey Strode, the best dressed man in comics. Move a little closer so people could see you, because this is how we look here. And you've got a comic that you're going to be talking about. Yes, this is my brand new comic I'm debuting here today. It's RoboCats vs. Thunderdogs. So you can flip through if you want to, so you get familiar with the work. First off, uh, this is not just a 32-page comic. This is a big, thick, what they, what prestige format is what it's called now. Yeah. Right? It used to be called the Dark Knight format. The graphic trade, for sure. Yes. So it's cats and dogs versus giant cats and dogs and giant robots that battle each other. Dedicated to a much loved pet. Yes, dedicated to my dog. Much love. So yeah. we start with dinosaurs. Yeah, we start okay. with. Yeah, that, that's probably the most controversial part of the book because <laughs> it's like it's like ugh, evolution. <laughs> <laughs> So it starts out with the history of dogs, like, you know, from like, uh, like saber tooth tigers and dire wolves, and then it goes into dogs and cats battling with, you know, sticks and stones, then the machine guns and, you know, getting into space. And they decide that, you know, this, you know, we're kind of working up to a MAD situation. So let's just halt this and we'll go with robot fights. There we go. And this is actually, a, what you turn to is actually an interesting page. I actually, um, took all these robots and modeled them in 3D. So that, oh, way wow. when I was, so that way when I was turning them, I can make sure that everything was correct. This, yes. this panel I drew, it was, when I drew it, I was like totally off. I was like, I was like, whoa, I really messed that up. And so I went back, like turned the cat's head like that, modeled it so I could see exactly how it was supposed to look. Now, one of the things I noticed first off is there's a huge mix of styles and you draw it all, right? I draw it all, yes. So you're drawing, you know, you've got the tech stuff that mm -hmm. looks very, very techy, and you talk about the 3D, and, and then you've got these pages, which are very cartoonish. And I like the fact that you're mixing the styles because it shows that you have kind of this diversity of style and you can do many different things. Yeah, exactly, and you know, like a lot of my influences are, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, manga, you know, especially like, you know, Matt Cross, the giant robots flying around, and then you know indie stuff like R. Chrome. You know, so it's like I like to mix it all together, and you know, I'm really happy with the way this book has turned out. Now, it, because it's a prestige format book, there's a lot of pages there and everything. My first question when somebody's putting that out like this, it's is this something that you did online to get feedback, or did you just start and go? I just start and went. Okay. So publishing that is not cheap. No, it's this really, is a really it's a quality package. It's a quality package. It, they're not cheap to make, but at the price point they're at right now, people haven't seen a bad an eyelash. Right. So, I mean, I think people understand like how bad it is to actually print things up. And it is available online in digital format for a lot cheaper. Okay. So if people want to just like, well, I'll spend five, but a lot of people still like to read comics. And that's yes. still what the comic is. It's like, I like the paper. I love the paper. So um, is this, how many, how long have you been coming to the MCBA cons? Um, 15 years, maybe? 15 years? Yeah. I don't know the exact day, but one day I just showed up with my brand new comic, went and just like, like kind of like elbowed my way into a table and sat there and started selling shows, uh, okay. comics, and I've been here ever since. So 15 years ago, what sort of comics were you doing? I was doing the Space Sheriff and Happy Space Boy comic. Okay. And was that self-published? Yes. Okay. So you've, uh, you've been self-published all along? Yep. Okay. Are you through Diamond? Can people pick this up at their comic shop? I am not with Diamond. They said that they would not distribute my comic. Okay. <laughs> we have talked to some indie creators who are finding that because Diamond, because Diamond's the, the big dog. The only dog. There used to be some smaller ones. There was Cold Cut Distribution yeah. and a couple of, and well, Rip Off, Rip Off Press still distributes their underground stuff. Yeah. But there have been a couple people who've kind of popped up the last couple of years who are saying, we want to do independent distribution. But they can never really seem to get a foothold. Yeah. Because... The margins are too tight. The shops. Yeah. The shops are like, I don't want to deal with another distributor. Yeah, exactly. That too. So as an independent artist, if this isn't asking too much, what is your business plan 
for getting this stuff out there. I see you said you've got online, you've got printed books, you're doing conventions. Sure. What is your business plan? Well, you know, business plan, business plan. <laughs> <laughs> Artists, no, ladies I, and gentlemen. I do this for the love. Okay. Know, for sure. Um, I would say that I am starting to look into different like companies to possibly get it on TV. Okay. And then kind of like use that as my springboard to grow it further. I think that Diamond, I might submit it again to Diamond and they might do it. So that would at least get it into all the cop copy shops, yep. you know, around the world. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I totally understand why they're hesitant with one of my books. I mean, one of my books, like, it went to the distributor and, like, the pages were all, like, not in the right order. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll... And so there's, there's, like, I think we ate all your last comic. Okay. Like, it's like, yeah, it, that was probably a bad thing. But you've been doing it for 15 years. You're hitting conventions and stuff. What are the big conventions other than here that you do attend? Sure, I do a lot of just kind of the local shows. Like I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try and get into Eau Claire Comics. I think I'm gonna do the one in Iowa, and then I'm doing um, LA in the fall. Oh, okay. Yeah. And at, so you've done this convention for 15 years. What's been the biggest change you've seen? Um, well, definitely the space. I mean, it used to be out at a hotel. Ah, uh, the, the the beloved Thunderbird, which is being torn down as we speak. Yep. The tackiest place on earth. Yep. So I think I did a show there, and yeah, it, it's amazing, like how big it's gotten, and just to kind of see like all the people I've met through the years sitting next to people. I mean, I still see the same people at the show sometimes. You know, it's like it's like yeah, I don't draw comics anymore, but I still come and support the scene. Yeah. And that's really important. I think that's really great. And the fact that you've been coming here for years, every year you've got something new. Yeah. Or, hey, I've got this stuff. Last, now, last year I didn't come because I didn't have anything new because I was oh, okay. working on this book. So I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take a year off and, you know, really work on this book. Okay. Because I don't want to come here and, like, sit around with all my old stuff. It's like, people come up and say, like, what's new? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> and it's like, you know, that's, that's just not a way to do it. You know, let somebody else come in and, you know, have a shot at showing their stuff here and, you know dealing with the great folks at this show. I mean, just amazing. One of the things Mark Stegbauer, who we had on one of our regular episodes last week, said is because he's been coming here so long, he has regulars who come up every year and they want whatever he's doing new or they, last year you drew this for me, this year did this. Do you have the regulars who come up every year? I do, yes. And do you do commissions? I usually do sketches for free. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I don't, and I don't do Batman. So if somebody comes up and says, like, "Draw me Batman," I'll, I just like, "Why don't draw Batman?" You know, or, or do Aquaman. I'm like, sorry, I don't even know what he looks like. You know, <laughs> I can, I can, I can copy somebody else's sketch online, but it's like, well, that doesn't really mean anything, you know. <coughs> but not, you do your own characters. Yeah, I do my own characters. So if somebody comes up and says, "Do your characters," it's like, I'll oh, happily gladly do my characters. So um, you've got the Robocats versus Thunderdogs. What are some of the other books you've done? Uh, Space Trip and Happy Space Boy, Dynamite Pilot. Um, I wrote with a good buddy of mine over there. Um, we did. I, it, it, it's called Blue Lance Chronicles, but I don't. I never liked that name. It was supposed to be Blue Lance Heroine because it's a, like a lady who fights dragons, and you know, I wanted it to be that, but he changed it to that, and then that goes Her like it's heroin, a not heroin. Yeah. Heroin, not heroin. <laughs> I'm gonna move the camera a little bit because you're not on go. camera. People need to see you. Look at my pretty face. There we go. So yeah. So when you started doing comics, how old were you, and who were your influences? I, I don't know. I kind of started pretty young, I guess, in the beginning. More, I think my influences were kind of Marvel and Capcom. Okay. Capcom for sure. Like I used to draw the heck out of the Marvel or the. The Mega Man characters. Okay. Yeah. Mega Man. I used to draw those characters for hours and hours and hours on end. Now, other than your own stuff, what what are you excited about with comics lately? Um, I really liked King of Ring. King of Ring is really good. Um, there's another I can't remember the name of, but a lot a lot of kind of indie stuff. Okay. You know? I think you're kind of catching a theme that I'm not. I don't like Superman and. <laughs> yeah, Batman. one of the things about this convention that we point out is we have more independent creators here than any convention except San Diego. Yeah. Last year we actually surpassed SPX for the number of independent creators. And one of the reasons why is the convention gives tables to creators for free. Yeah. I, I, None I, of these there, other shows do. Yeah, I was going to say, are there any independent creators at San Diego? Oh, yeah. Doesn't feel like it. 
There are. They're shoved away in a far off room, and they have to pay for their table. And tables are really expensive. Yeah, I've done. I've done San Diego Comic Con three times, and it seems like you know if you have your own book, like nobody pays attention to you. Everybody wants to buy, you know, like rip off prints of Snoopy or something. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like you have lights for that. They're like, no. It's like. <laughs> so what is it? What is this sort of vibe you get this year? Is this? Is it bigger? Is it uh, more people willing to spend money? How does the year feel to you? Uh, it feels like people like to are spending money this year. I mean, there's been some tight years during the recession that were you know, pretty tough on comic books, but there's a lot of people here. There were a ton of people here yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Um, again, we don't we won't know numbers for a couple of weeks. I know last year they said it was between sixty five hundred and seven thousand. Yeah. Last year, it might be a little lighter than that this year, but. People seem like more in tune and wanting to look at stuff. Yep, I've noticed a lot more. Last year there were a lot of people walking around. This year there's a lot more people carrying bags. Yeah, and of course so this year I've got buying. this year I've got a really quality product. That yeah, I think it's, it's it's made a big difference. Like I brought I only brought 15 issues yesterday. I was like, oh yeah, 15. If I sell 15 books, I'm doing good. You know, I mean, I don't want to give away my trade secrets, but. You know, I thought 15 would be good. I was sold out by 4.30. There you go. I was like, people people come up to the table, they're just like, oh, can I get it? I was like, sold out. I got more coming tomorrow. Now, one of the things is with self-publishing, you can't do like the big companies do, where it's, oh, you know, we just send the file to, I think it's Toronto. Yeah. It's publishing for Marvel and DC now. It used to be Sparta. And believe it or not, because I'm from central Illinois, there are comic shops there that actually have some old of uh, uh, the lead the lead printing pages sure. from like the Dell stuff so you want an Uncle Scrooge not an original art page but an original they, they get the print plate, page the plate, the plate. <laughs> there are the shops there that plate. have those nice that's awesome and I've never seen those before that'd be awesome but with a package like this you know this is something that back in the 80s DC actually um, well the story is that when they went to this prestige format you know the square bound for Dark Knight Frank Miller, Dick Giordano, and Jeanette Kahn actually went to Sparta to make sure it was printed properly. And now, you don't need to do that sort of thing. No, nope, no. Nope. Where did you get this printed? This was through Kablam, who okay. I would highly recommend to all starting artists because you don't have to buy a thousand. You know, the worst thing in the world is to have a thousand of the comic that you spent all that time in sitting in a basement and you putting out like five grand for it yeah you know buy 30 you know go to a show see if they sell you know it'll it's i mean in your mind it, you know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're not making a lot of money on it but that's the only way to really kind of test like how it's going to go and i've done the thousand of a comic to begin with and i ended up eating them for breakfast in the morning with, oh there you with, go with with uh, almond uh, coconut milk on them. Well, yeah, you shred them up. And, shred them up. And, and they taste a lot like uh, Cheerios. Yeah, shredded wheat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I, I ate a lot of them, and it's you know it's not it's not a healthy breakfast. So what's your website where people can buy these at? I'm at uh, spacesheriff.com. Okay. And, or, or, uh, or Data Red Games. And 15 years is a long time to be doing this and still loving it. Yeah. Because you can see there are a lot of creators here. There are some who have been doing it for that long, and you'll be at their table, and they give you this face. Yeah. Or the people that don't even look up while they're sitting at their booth. Yeah. Those are the ones where you know, I haven't had a chance to walk around this year because I'm an idiot and said I would be live streaming the whole <laughs> damn show. Um, but usually there are years and there are the people who have their head down and they're sketching the whole time mm -hmm. and you come up and you want to you know say hi say date whatever and it's like okay thanks sorry yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see if we have any questions from the interwebs any questions from the interwebs giving creators a free table is a really good idea it brings in more people and more incentive to come in for the fans. I think the reason for that, and we started that when we started this convention 28 years ago, was we know who the stars are. Mm -hmm. People come here to see the creators. The creators are the stars. The retailers are the ones who are paying the bills. So you treat them well too. And then people like me, we're just great. Yeah. <laughs> well, they they got so along much. for 28 years without me. And But uh, here you go again. And, yep, I'll uh, let you hold on to that one. 
check out the book. Check out his stuff. Uh, you can buy it online, or you can uh, yep. email you to get a get a paper copy. Yep, not in stores. If if you want it in stores, go bug your retailer, and then they'll bug Diamond, and then Diamond will come to me and just like, oh yeah, right, we totally did want it. Get that in our get it that in store. Now, one other thing: could a store contact you directly and you sell to them wholesale? No, because the price doesn't work. Okay. I mean, I'd love to sell them in stores, and I'd like to sell them, you know, like in stores. But you know, they they, they need to make their money, and right. I need to make my money, right. and it's like together we don't make any money. Because I know that um, there are some local creators here. Uh, uh, the guy who does Uptown Girl. Sorry, I can't yeah. think of his name. Bob Lipsky. Bob Lipsky. What Good he guy. does, he prints them up and then he drives to all the different comic shops and gives them copies. Says, here you go. I'll be back in a month. Let me know how many you sold. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's a really interesting model. It's a very that's, odd that's a very way of doing model, things. For sure. But uh, all of these different ways to sell comics outside of the... Well, you know, I, I get my orders, I print them up, I send them to Diamond, then I forget about it. You're actually out there doing the work, shaking the hands, kissing the babies, and coming up with ideas that I, you know, Robocats versus Thunderdogs is something where I wouldn't have even thought of, which is very cool that it's not just another superhero. It's, no, you know what, this could be this, this could be this. Are, have you looked into any sort of uh, toys or marketing or anything like that? Yeah, I've got a toy over in my booth right now. It's just a, it's a prototype toy. I bought a Corgi doll. Okay. Put, put the little hoodie on it so it looks like my character. Okay. And they get the little emblems on the shoulder so it looks more like it. Okay. So it's kind of a proof of concept toy. All and right. People keep saying, it's like, I can see this on TV. I can see this as toy. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, I can see all that stuff too <laughs> for sure. So it's like, I got a toy right here. And I these are all 3D models, so I could turn it into like... 3D model plastic toys like McDonald's kind of stuff for like like tomorrow. And well, I might go cool. to the Maker's um, thing and actually get something printed up in 3D. Oh yeah, I've seen uh, Maker's, I follow them on Instagram and they're really kind of pushing real hard for we just want creative people. Yeah. And I think that's very cool. I think we're seeing kind of an explosion in, in, in comics and stuff, especially when- Do you want your next artist? Get this guy. Hey, do you're, do you want to be interviewed? Do you, to, do you want to be on interviewed on the radio? Oh, jeez. Uh, jump sure. in. This guy's awesome. All right. I'll jump out, and he'll right. jump right Thank in. Thank you again. Go ahead and sit down and introduce yourself. We are live streaming right now on the YouTube. This guy has amazing art. Hi, everybody. Oh, did I just flick some? I, just, I think I just gave the camera the finger. Oh, amazing <laughs> art. Amazing art. Oh, we do that all the time. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, my Jim gosh. on the show, so she's always flipping things off. Oh, sure. Yep. Uh. <laughs> oh. oh. High five down low. What else do we do? I forget. Wait, uh, we do this? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Hot air balloon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. I've been running around the entire convention. Yeah. Giving away your mini comic. Giving away the <laughs> shit that I should be selling. Yep. Uh, talking to artists. Talking to artists. Getting to know people. Bringing people over here for you, <laughs> good viewers, to listen to this guy who actually knows what he's doing interview. I just, Fuck if I know what I'm doing. Uh, same here, same here. I just stumbled in here, so. I'm just going to go back to dancing now, so bye. <laughs> and I'm supposed to concentrate while you're doing that. Because it's the most amazing thing I've seen in years. It's the most amazing thing I've seen in years. I live in the woods. I never see anything, so everything's amazing <laughs> to me. <laughs> so introduce yourself to, to the wide viewing audience. Uh, my name is Mark uh, Lone. I do uh, screen printed posters. Uh, going to Dark Wizards and Dragons and shit. Oh, okay. Yep. And how long have you been coming to the convention? Oh, jeez. Ever since I found Audible, it, like probably like 10 years ago or something. 10 maybe? years you've been coming here. Yeah. So um, you found out about the convention, and one of the things we tell people is everybody gets a free table. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, they treat their artists so awesome at this convention, too, you know? Like, they give us, like, meals, and they're nice to us, and... <laughs> They treat us like human beings. Yeah, it's just great. I've never found another convention like it. You know what I mean? It's great. <laughs> so, w one of the things I like to ask people is, how did you get started in art? What was the the trigger where you were like, this is what I want to do? Uh, probably just like watching like He Man when I was a little kid and just like coloring pictures, and I just like never stopped. Okay. And like never did my homework in school and just was like a flunky. <laughs> <laughs> and just kept drawing, and then like. 
all my teachers and everybody is like, oh, this kid's not going to be anything ever. We got to get him to stop drawing. And then like now that like I'm getting a little bit of recognition for like my posters and stuff, then like some of the artists that or some of the teachers that didn't like what I was doing back then, now they're like, I know that kid. <laughs> It's one of the things where you hear about cre creative people in, in a lot of ways have trouble in school because they know what they want to do when they're very young. Yeah, yeah. And when you're, you, you know what you want to do when you're driven, it's like, I don't need algebra. I need to learn how to, I need to learn how to use a French curve. Yeah. I need to learn, I need to learn how to use Coptic pens. That and like anatomy and yep. just, uh, you know, like the basic stuff. I mean, like. If you like a high school art class now, I well I taught like an after school one, uh, comic class. How cool is that? If I would have had that when I was a kid, I would have like just went ape shit. But uh, you know, just like this week we're going to do the most messed up robots that you guys can think of. So just draw robots and shit, <laughs> you know. And like the next week after that, and it's like uh, dragons. How about that? Uh, you know, like just fun stuff. But like. I think that it's good to have like uh, actual art though too, like whatever they'd be teaching in, in high school, like, you know, like fruit and just like re realism and things like that, you know what I mean? I don't know. But. Well, one of the things about, I, I'm an amateur comic historian, when you look at the people who got into comics who were very successful early on, yeah, they knew classical art. Brune Hogarth, oh, he, yeah. you know, he put out books. Okay, yes. this is how Da Vinci taught people to draw. Yeah. This is an entire book on how to draw a hand. Yep, yep. Um, the muscles yes. and the skeleton. Knowing all that, uh, John Buscema used a lot of classic art poses. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to do the pose. Because okay. you can't talk about John Buscema yeah. without doing the John Buscema slump. Do you know the John Buscema slump? I've, I've seen, yeah, in the instructional videos. John Buscema <laughs> will draw a villain. And the villain doesn't sit like this. Okay. The villain sits like this. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> because the villain is so relaxed because he is in charge and he is in control and yep. he knows. Yep. He has no worries before <laughs> Conan, whoever, screw them, they, they've yep. lost. Stan Lee would say that that's the Marvel way. Yes. <laughs> Actually, um, Stan Lee would say, do it the way Jack Kirby did. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of people misread that as Trace Kirby. Yeah, when what Stan was saying is no, make it dynamic. Dynamic. Don't just have yeah. somebody throw a punch. When somebody throws a punch, they pull way back, uh -huh. or, and yes. then follow throughs way like that. That's uh -huh. not realistic. Doesn't matter. It looks more dramatic. Totally. Um, <coughs> some of the artists that I follow, like on Facebook and stuff like that, has just been like invaluable to me too. Like. Uh, one of my heroes growing up was Eric Larson. Yes. And uh, he puts a lot of stuff on there about like uh, something like there was one where like you're if you're throwing a punch, if your character's throwing a punch, like his other arm or his leg's going to be back. Yes. And like just like things like that. Subconscious things, you know what I mean? Like one of the things about Eric Larson's uh, Facebook page is this is a this is a bad page. And here's why. Yeah. Here's this error. Uh -huh. Here's this transition. Here's this. And yep. at the after party yesterday, we're talking with Angel Medina. We cool. love Gene Colan's art. Absolutely love it. Yep. When it comes to storytelling, yeah. he would fail a lot okay. because if an artist has to draw an arrow as to what the next panel is, yeah. they have failed as a comic book artist. Yeah. You could be a great artist, yeah. but if you can't bring that eye through the page yeah. without trying, mm -hmm. You fail. That's the magic, man. Right yep. there. Yeah. And just like spotting blacks on a page and just like, you know, um, now, I, m now, I miss now, doing now comics. Artists <laughs> understand the term spotting blacks. Yeah. For people who don't do art, what does spotting blacks mean? I guess that could sound pretty bad. <laughs> well, um, it's one of those things where, yeah, I'm not an artist. Yeah. I know the writer end of it, but I've studied art a lot, and I would see yeah. that phrase, and I would look at a page and go, I, I don't I don't get it, until somebody explained it. Yeah, you have to have, I mean, that's why these conventions are just, like, for me, I never took any classes or anything, I just went around and pestered all my heroes, and, like, some of them wouldn't tell me shit. Yes. Some of them don't want to let any competition in, which is, you know, I guess that's understandable, because it's, it's hard to make a living doing this, man. It yeah. really is, but... Um, me, I just tell, and like, kids come up with their books or whatever, like, I, don't, I still don't know shit. Yeah. I, I'll always be trying to learn new shit, but it's like, um, you know, you got your page, 
and I try to apply that to my posters I do because I, I started out self-publishing and stuff like that and kind of caught the eye of some people that wanted me to do like movie posters and things. So I mainly, that's sort of what I do right now, but uh, you can do the same thing where like your eye is going to start on this corner of the poster and then you just have to like direct it and like, yes, it's it, it, sometimes I just get perplexed about it and I think about it way too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, but maybe I should just get back into comics. <laughs> But explain to people what spotting blacks mean. It oh, has sure. to do with inking, and it yeah. has to do with shadow and, and, and things like that. Directing the eye movement, yep. Um, so, like, if you have your page and it's all penciled out, you pretty much know what you want shaded in there and stuff like that. And this is, like, where you have to do, like, and your thumbnails really helps, too. If you scribble it out on a notebook page where you want person A talking to person B or uh, a car chase or something, you can make the smoke go up or just like, you know, like plan it out a little bit ahead of time uh, before you lay down that black ink on there and then look uh, at the big picture a little bit, She's pull it away favorite. and just, uh, yeah, if you have, like you said earlier, if you have to draw an arrow through it, you should draw the arrow when you're doing the layouts. Yes. Maybe, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not professionally trained. I just bullshit my way through it. <laughs> well, wait, I, I do uh, uh, commentary at times on, on Kirby stories because I'm a Kirby worshiper. And yeah. Kirby will do stuff like the characters are all looking this way. Yeah. And then here, the motion is moving down. And here, the, the motion is this way. And then always a cliffhanger at the bottom of the page. Uh -huh. But he uses the characters in their direction and their movement to push you mm -hmm. to the next panel. Yeah, or you could just do something like really dumb and like... You'll have all the characters looking this way, and then like one leaf falling off a tree going this way, yes. or, or just something to like make you feel like there's dimension in it. And, yes, you and know movement. I mean? Yeah, in a still image. Now, <laughs> you said that you've done comics, and now you're doing posters. Yep, I just do. Which uh, do you prefer? Uh, well, the posters are like kind of like a whole story in one picture, but and like comics are way more challenging. Uh, these days, I kind of like more have like use my comic. Uh, knowledge and skill as a weapon to threaten people like if you screw me over I'll make a comic about all the messed up <laughs> shit you did to me like uh, so something like the bank like cancel my card or something I was like going in there with my art and I was like I'm gonna go in there and tell that them ladies that if they don't fix my bank account I'm gonna make a story about the messed up crap they did right and then uh, I went in there with my artbook and stuff and sat down and I was like ready to give them a whole spiel and everything and then uh they're like, what's that? What do you have there? And I was like, oh, this is my art. I chickened out, you know, and they're like, oh, that's so nice. That's great. Uh, what did you need? I'm like, oh, well, you canceled my card and like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, we'll fix that right away. And yeah. So, you know, like, I didn't even have to use a spiel, but, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it'd be really neat to like have, I think if you're going to do like a self published thing, like the first time I, when I got into comics, it would be just awesome to have the marketing money to like, because like there's people that do fan art yeah stuff like that and that kind of like sells itself or whatever but uh if you're doing something original which is awesome and this is what should be i mean it's just too bad that more people aren't giving that a chance like the bystander person that, oh i've seen the iron man movie so i'm gonna go to a comic convention you know what i mean some of those people they'll stumble across something and really like it but uh it just needs to be more money into the arts, I think, you know, like to get some of these more original things off the ground and just put, put it into the marketing, I think. I think one of the cool things over the last few years is that the independent, it, it, Amazon calls it the long tail. Okay. You can look at the comic sales and you go, oh yeah, you know, Star Wars sold 120,000 and this sold 110, this sold 110. Yeah. And they have the top 300. Sure. Ten years ago, number 300 sold around 900 copies. Oh, okay. Now, number 300 sold 4,000 copies. Yeah, and that's what you need to have to be in the Diamond Book distributing right. and stuff like that. But the stuff at the top is it growing, yeah. but all of this stuff is growing, which yeah. to me means you're getting more people who are buying. Able to see. Who the... are buying the, the smaller stuff. Yeah. And maybe, you know, they're not buying the fifth Batman book. Instead, they're picking up Paper Girls or yeah. Savage Dragon or you know, any of these others. Yeah, and that's awesome. Like, yeah, 
but how long is it going to be allowed to continue before somebody realizes they can make money on that and then clamps down and makes you pay to be included in the algorithm? You know what I mean? But you've also got comicsology. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've got the digital stuff. Uh, Jim Wicked does her stuff as web comics, yeah. and has she's really building a whole new sort of business model, not just on the web comics, but also with the paintings and the this and the that, and using yeah. Patreon to sort of make sure there's that. And yeah. some of the artists, you know, Steve Lytle has a Patreon. He's doing a web comic called Justin Zane. There's a guy he used to draw X Men covers and the Legion of Superheroes. He's moving there because he wants to own it. Yeah, that's he wants to own his own yeah. stuff. Yeah, and you're on the other end. Now, what sort of things do you have at your table? If people are to come to the con and they come to your table, what do you have? Oh well, there's some stuff that I've worked on. Um, my friend uh, Tim Doyle, he does Nakatomi down in Austin, Texas. Uh, pretty much just like pop culture uh, screen print posters, and um, we got a few Balrog ones, just like some. Tolkien stuff. Uh, there's a bit of fan art, I guess. Uh, but when we do fan art, we try to do it really nice and classy. Uh, the um, How late did you stay last night? Got some glow in the dark stuff. How late oh, cool. Uh, got a glow in the dark Cthulhu on Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody seems to like Cthulhu. Yeah. Now, have you read the original stories? Mm, a bit. Okay. A bit. Just to research the character. But yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. There's actually the uh, At the Mountain of Madness. Yep. I don't know. I'll have to come back later and put a link on that because there was just this awesome, like, uh, anatomy diagram of those creatures that were in that, like the mushroom beings. Oh, you know? okay, yeah. And this one guy's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, Lovecraft, he was, like, really detailed about what he had there. And he was like, so all the other artists that have done this character, I mean, this is how you could do it. The arms are optional. Uh, he left that out open to the imagination, but I think this is what he meant. And yeah, that's really neat. I don't know, uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, most of the Lovecraft stuff is in the public domain. So like, there's like really awesome art being put out by like lots of artists. I mean, like stuff in the public domain. Like, I wonder if uh, the Monster Squad, because all those the Wolfman and all that stuff. As long as it's not the actors of the, you know, like Boris Karloff and stuff right. like that, it's open game. You know, you can just make whatever creative stuff you want with those characters. I guess you know, and like, so that's kind of tricky when you're doing movie posters and stuff like that. Yeah, you're not even always sure like if the person that's hiring you need to do it, if they're going to be mass producing it or whatever. But um, we always just try to make it as cool as we can, you know. And um, one thing I was talking to my uh, some friends with. Uh, these guys are struggling and trying to get their uh, original comics off the ground is I want to build I have like halfway built a screen print table and like uh, you know people love that gimmicky stuff like shiny ink and like glow in the dark and like uh, there's like some hidden images so like if you like charge it up and then it's like whoa this character just appeared you know what I mean like you turn off the lights I want to do some comic book covers like that oh okay like in Hand ink or hand inks, you know, you just like pull yourself limited edition stuff. But I, uh, speaking of my booth, I should probably go back and make sure they didn't rip and place apart. Man, <laughs> well, where can people find your work online? Uh, I have a big cartel, otherwise, I have uh, Mark Lone's art page on Facebook. Okay, uh, pretty much all the links for all my stuff is on there, and I got some stuff in different galleries right now. So, um, and we got a uh, the burglar, it's called, coming out in a couple months. Oh, cool, uh, it's a smog and it's all gold inks and oh, okay. metallic red and stuff, so that should be pretty pretty killer when it comes out. But. So you're actually playing a lot with the format and the form, as well as doing the art. Yeah, I guess That's so, yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope your table is still in one piece. Yeah. Great to meet you. Thanks, man. Take yeah. care. Thanks for having me on the radio. Sure. Woo-hoo.